Good morning, it's Ross Wall here from Infomanage.com with David Fraser and Tens Henning and we're continuing our discussion around IDS. In this particular video we're going to be talking about uh, the vision that IDS had that when it first got set up in the late 1990s and just how it's developed and some of the key um, attributes that IDS have that are quite different from other models that have been run for this sort of output. So David, could you talk to us about uh, just the overall setup of IDS and also how you've partnered with a provider and how successful that's been? Okay Ross, um, Ross the, um, the exciting thing about um, IDS and the, the original um, concept and vision uh, was that um, we were seeking to make uh, advanced asset management tools available to every unit of um, local government in New Zealand irrespective of their size. So we wanted um, those who were aspiring to um, become really good asset managers to, um, to have these tools available to them that, uh, you know, in, in normal circumstances their, their councils would not have been able to afford. And uh, Dayton saw what we're trying to do and they came on board and really helped us facilitate that. Um, we were able to um, get into a collective arrangement not only within New Zealand but with Dayton's and actually really provide these opportunities across the country. And, and David, look, my observation over the last 18 years is that Dayton's have been a, a very active partner in this relationship and they put a lot of effort, a lot of their senior staff, uh, executive and um, owners even, quite committed to this relationship with New Zealand. Do you just want to uh, give us a bit more of an insight into that? Yes, Ross, I couldn't speak highly enough of, of the approach that Dayton's has taken to this. I think we are actually quite different to uh, some of the other parts of the, the world where they operate and they've seen, um, they've seen that they can really help us but I think they also see that we provide some opportunities and some experiences that they perhaps wouldn't get elsewhere and uh, Dayton's is a very interactive, um, uh, involving type of company. They, they run user conferences each year where we can go and participate and we can give them feedback of the things that we see would improve not only our performance but would also improve the product they provide and they're very open to suggestions. They're fantastic to work with. Uh, that's uh, quite, every, every software vendor in my observation do a lot of work in that area obviously um, make those promises so it's quite refreshing to hear good feedback about one that delivers on those promises. Tens, another thing that's quite unique about the IDS arrangement is the consortium. Um, and that's a consulting consortium and um, do, you, do you just want to unpack that a little bit for us? Ross, yes, we often uh, get envied by the rest of the world um, technical sector about what we have achieved in this regard. Um, initially the project was rolled out by one company, uh, but then two years after that a consortium of consulting engineers and contractors, everybody basically participating in this project, has got a seat around the table um, and we share technical developments amongst us. Um, when we go out to clients, we will compete fiercely, but when we get into the room, we actually work well together. So I think that's quite unique. <laughs> Could I just add a little bit to that? One of the strengths of the consortium is New Zealand is actually quite a small country. Yeah. And sometimes um, there's, there's conflicts of interest or some of those issues, which the consortium gives us the ability to work our way past those in some situations. It, it does, and, and just for... Um, viewers from larger companies in the north countries in the northern hemisphere new zealand engineering is is a very small team uh, the senior people you're talking less than 100 and, and we all know each other um, and we all meet quite regularly at conferences and and within the consortium so what one of the real advantages of the ids consortium is it's been able to be managed at a senior level to to get past the the inevitable questions around engagement and IP and, and things like that. So Tens, um, just could you talk to us in, within the consortium and IDS, uh, how is the intellectual property held? Yeah, this is always a, a concern around these sorts of things. So That's uh, correct, Ross. So the business model is that uh, we've got license to use the DTIM software, which is a vehicle for the intellectual property that we have developed in New Zealand. Initially we've adopted the full uh, World Bank uh, HDM philosophy and approach and even some of the deterioration models that came from the World Bank. 
Um, later over time, we've done our own research, our own developments, and we've incorporated that uh, best practice into the IP that we have. So if you want to uh, think about it, it's almost like Microsoft Excel, where we have developed a very special um, spreadsheet that is owned by the New Zealand industry. Well, thank you for that. Um conversation Thames and David and if you want more information particularly about that part of the model uh, we'll put some links in under the video but also the IDS website has uh, additional information about that. Thank you for uh, watching this video and we'll look forward to seeing you on the next one.